The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Well, I got a bunch of questions this morning from you folks, and we'll try to answer them as we go along. Uh, the first chart I've uh, posted, which I usually do, is the long-term chart on the DAX, and you can see the patterns that have completed up there with the big ABCD patterns uh, occurring. And then if you take a look at the smaller time frame, the market's down a little bit today, looking at that ABCD on a shorter time frame. Now, the reason why that is important, if you, if you see that, chart in the DAX, all you have to do is to go in last night and you'll be able to see exactly what happened with the E-mini S&P. Let me get this up here. Uh, at, at the, when we hit the uh, 30, well, I can't even believe these numbers, 3336. Folks, on August the, uh, uh, let me see, uh, no, April 16th, 1982, they started trading the CME at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, the S&P pit opened, and they couldn't get anybody to go in the pit. Leo had to go out and pull people from the T-bill pits and other places. Because I had a suit on, I got to, to be in the picture, uh, in the pit, like I was doing something, but there was really nothing going on. I, I don't think they did more than 20 or 30 trades that day, but the S&P was trading at 103, folks. From 103 to 3300, that's how much that thing has jumped since 1982. So uh, that's just a little bit of history that you might be, may or may not be interested in. But you'll notice that that pattern is exactly the same as what happened in the DAX. That's just a shorter term pattern. Uh, I, you know, and they they happen just about everywhere. <laughs> now, if you take a look here, we see that exactly the same thing in the NASDAQ. We'll get this up here to take a look at it. You'll be able to see that same pattern. And uh, the high so far in the NASDAQ got up to, I think, 92.40. We're a tiny bit under that right now. Uh, one of the questions that uh, someone asked is, how does this market compare to what happened with the dot-com bubble uh, in 2000? Folks, that, there's no comparison. The dot-com bubble was a once-in-a-generation or once-in-a-lifetime thing that you'll you'll probably never see again. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago, but, you know, they, they, these companies didn't even have sales. They All they had was, uh, you know, per, possible sales and they would double in price and this went on for just about two years from 98 into march of 2000 and then in march of 2000 on the 24th of march that's when the top of the nasdaq came in at 5000 and here we are at 9000 so that you can see the move that we've had but the market went from 5000 down to 1000 after you know that dot-com bubble popped and the market broke into 2000 and 2002 and uh, then the market changed direction. Getting back to 2002, uh, this was the SARS epidemic. I was in China, in Guangzhou, China, where it started during that time, and I did not know anything of what was going on. I was there for 10 days. I, taught, I spoke at three universities uh, in Guangzhou, and then I uh, went on to Wuhan, where this uh, coronavirus is right now. And all during that time in 2002, you know, uh, that, you know that we never heard anything. There was nothing. And the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention goes back to the next thing I want to talk about, and that is data coming out. Uh, in 2000, uh, 2003, I was in Beijing, and I was uh, uh, giving a speech uh, to the graduate students there, and one of the professors uh, took me over to the economics department where they uh, issued all these reports pretty much like uh, – uh, our, our, our uh, I can't remember the name of the what department it is, but it's where all the reports come out. And the, the guy, the professor, Andy, told me, he said, look, he said, uh, I, these reports are ridiculous. And I said, why? He said, well, they, they make them up. He said, the numbers don't even, he said, they can't possibly fit. And he said, but you, you can't change them, he said, because this is what we have to go on. And he told me what the number was going to be before it ever came out. And it was at, with, within a point zero zero one percent of exactly what it was supposed to be. So when, you're, when you hear things in the news, uh, 
And you and believe me, remember yesterday I, I showed you how four companies control the media? And when you toss in Google and Facebook, I mean, they control it all. And that's why you see so much fake news and stuff out there. So be really careful about what you listen to and, and uh, what you think is right. Let the markets decide, you know, where it's going to go. Now, today on Davos, you know, I love to look at that show because I've been to Davos and it's just an incredible place right there in the middle of the Alps, colder than a grave digger's butt, but it's, uh, it's really pretty cool. But when you listen to every single person that was on there, it just gave a rosy outlook. There was not one person in there that said, gee, you know, maybe we're a little extended here. No, nobody, not one person. In two days that I've been looking at this, that, that anything even remotely, and Ray Dalio, who's usually quite conservative, was uh, very, very bullish, and and Paul Tudor Jones was on, and and it was very, very bullish, and they're right. They, they, this thing might go up for another year. I I don't know. What I do is when the market, you know, moves, I just try to look at the patterns that, you know, allow me to, uh, you know, enter and don't have to. I don't have to risk very much, you know. We went short on uh, Sunday night at on uh, at a very nice price of 33.28. The market broke down to uh, 33.08, and we ended up, you know, being out of that trade at break even. Uh, and you know, may it may or may or not may or may not have been a big one. I don't know, but that's just that's just what I what I have to do. I look at the patterns, and uh, you, you see them just over and over again, and that's what you're you know really really watching. But we're accelerating today. I did want to bring up the Dow because it's been a, a tad weaker. I'll bring this up to to show you what we're watching here. Uh, just a second. Yeah, and you know, folks, let's let me let me ask you a question. They were just bring this to your attention. Nine people have died in uh, Wuhan where this coronavirus started. <clears throat> okay. Do you realize that there's 1.4 billion people in uh, in the uh, in China and that they 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 talk to us about nine people? Well, something is going on here. It must be very very serious. And the reason why is we've got the Chinese New Year starting on the 25th uh, into that new moon. Uh, and so that that's a big thing. You know, China is going to be closed for three or four days, and you got you got 300 million people in China will be traveling over that time frame. So, this is what they're concerned about: is uh, the fact that uh, this thing might be very, very. Uh, they don't have a cure for it, of course, but it might be very, very. Uh, move around quite a bit. So travel can really uh, mess things up. Also, just for your information, is that they're out of ma these face masks that they use for covering your mouth in surgery and stuff. They're out of those. They're, you can't buy them in Hong Kong. They're, they're completely out of masks. And uh, so I don't know what it is in China, but, you know, there's the people are scared, and they probably should be. Uh, remember, SARS was... Uh, uh, you know, pretty much uh, uh, supposedly destroy the world, but it actually didn't. So just remember that what you hear in the news is really quite uh, amazing. In fact, when, when I heard uh, Donald Trump today talk about the Dow should be 10,000 points higher, I said, by golly, that sounds pretty good. I remember Irving Fisher from Princeton University was talking about the stock market in September 1929 and said it had reached a permanent high. 877-927-6648. Keep those cards and letters coming in, folks. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted the chart of March wheat. As you can see, it's completed some ABCD patterns up in here. Uh, it's been actually doing quite well, given the fact that uh, – well, corn's been holding up pretty good. We had a breakdown of beans that we'll talk about in just a little bit. But this is an interesting pattern here on the daily chart. You can see up around – we're, we're nine cents higher this morning, folks. We hit uh, 591 in the wheat. But what we want to do is to go in and look at it on a little bit longer time frame. We'll just get this March wheat up so you'll be able to see it. And you'll be able to see that we are completing a, a beautiful ABCD pattern up in this area. Uh, so we should pay uh, close attention to that because – it's, and we've been very bullish wheat, as you know. Uh, we got out of it, of course, quite a bit lower, 570 or so. But now we're up into that uh, 590 level. And so it looks like it's going to be uh, very interesting to see if that's going to be – look about – to see that's going to work. Uh, David has posted a really cool quote here, one of my favorite authors, Mark Twain. Whenever you find yourself on the side of the majority, it's time to pause and reflect. And that's what I got out of that thing at Davos today is that everybody was just – it was almost like – and not only that, but I was very impressed with the fact that uh, uh, President Trump was so well received considering he's got so much uh, on his plate and, uh, you know, under in the, uh, impeachment over here. And so – it was uh, it was really, uh, really quite amazing. But uh, the fact that the stock market is this strong is a tribute to uh, our economy, and we'll see. But the problem that I see is the, you know, how people understand what the Fed is. And here's where we have some great news for you, folks. Let me get this up here. This is a chart that I posted yesterday from our good friend and colleague uh, Shane Smolian from the Wolf Trader. And we are going. Net, debt is a. You're right, Marshall. Debt's where it's at. But you'll notice here that we are. Uh, uh, in a time where the, the Fed is still pumping. But Shane is going to be our guest, I believe, next Wednesday. We're going to have him on for the whole show, I believe. And uh, that'll be uh, that'll be fun. We're going to have an active day that day because that's a day uh, that uh, we have him on, plus some other things that are going on. So we'll make sure that uh, we'll be real, well prepared for that. 
All right. The next one, we talked about the wheat. We got that taken care of. Now let's talk about Mr. Elon. Oh, we want to do the uh, want to do the FTSE here. Well, this is the FTSE weekly chart. Uh, here again, you see the uh, Gartley pattern that is here. Uh, it's actually backed off uh, from that level already this week. In fact, it's only been the U.S. markets that have been going nuts. The Hang Seng turned down, China turned down, DAX turned down, FTSE turned down, but we haven't done anything yet in the stock market. Ours might go up forever, and if it does, that'll be probably a good thing. But when forever is over, that's when you have to worry. So we'll do one at a time. Let's take a look here at Tesla. I wanted to get this up here because it's very important. The reason why I think this is important, you notice here the 1.618. Uh, Tesla today, folks, is trading at, uh, I believe, 375. It's up 30, $30 higher than the 1.618. Now, remember, we went from 547 all the way down to uh, 498. Remember, dropped that, and then bada bing, bada boom, uh, news comes out, and he goes crazy. And then today, uh, Mr. Trump gave him a very glowing uh, report of uh, how well he's doing. And he is he has to be a genius. I mean, this, this company was almost ready to go bankrupt uh, about two years ago, and here it is now larger than Ford and General Motors combined. That's just an amazing, a $100 billion value. The only uh, car company in the world that is bigger than them is Volkswagen. And, uh, you know, that's a lot of different divisions. So who knows? In that little book only yesterday that talks about the things that was happening during 1929, people don't re recall this, but there were over 2,000 automobile companies, folks, in uh, in. And during that time, of course, it got down to three a little bit, a few, few uh, 60, 70 years later. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But if you stop and think what was happening during the 30s, folks, we were having electricity. My gosh, we were having uh, refrigerators that you didn't have to put ice on the top. We had the telephone. Oh, my gosh. And we had the radio was starting to explode. And just shortly after that, you know, the television came in in the late 50s. So this was a time that things went crazy. And yet the stock market gave back 90 percent of its value in, in 1929. I'm not saying this is 1929. I'm just saying that the market's a tad bit, a little bit over exuberant. But, hey, you can stay over exuberant for a long time. So we'll move on here and uh, talk just a little bit about one other thing that I think is pretty important here. Uh, I posted the chart at Tesla. I wanted to make sure I did that. And I did that one. What was the other one? Oh, this is the one I wanted to mention. This is the one that's uh, – this is – if you like Fibonacci, boys and girls, this is the one because uh, it's either going to – they're going to fish or cut bait on this one. This is the coffee. We've been talking about this uh, for well over a week uh, t well, two weeks probably, but watch this 111. We've been here now for three days at 111. This is either really strong support at 61% or it's distribution. So keep an eye on the coffee. If you bought it at 111, your stop's got to be at like 109. You've got to risk uh, two cents in coffee, which is roughly $700. So uh, that's the only way you can do it. The good part is you don't have to own a coffee plantation. You can just buy a future, and uh, that takes it uh, out of their, out of your hands. You don't have to worry about uh, somebody sharecropping it or anything for you, so you actually own it. So that's what we're watching in coffee. Whether that's going to mean much or not, uh, we have to wait and see. If you remember, yesterday we were talking about uh, the soybeans, and I uh, wanted to make sure we get up here. Oh, dear. Just a second here. I wanted to correct that. Cough. Where is the soybean? Yeah, here we go. Here's that soybean chart, and I want to get it up here to give you an idea here. Here is the soybeans. You'll notice we said it had to hold that uh, 919 level, and it didn't. It broke below it. Now, we're trading at 919 again uh, today, but uh, that that's basically a risk-free trade if you're going to do something like that because this market actually – uh, rallied about almost 20 cents up to 936 before it reversed and those that's what that's what these numbers and patterns tell you is how much you have to risk they do have some predictive value but you know it's the question there it's some it's not all the time you have to absolutely remember that uh, uh, here's a david's posted a short history of financial euphoria by john kenneth galbraith Boy, I really liked him. I, when I was in Indiana, he 
he spoke there several times. And one of my, I've told this before, but it's worth it. He was speaking to a graduate class in uh, MBAs, and he said, uh, you'll learn more about going in and shorting a contract of soybeans than you ever will in two years of graduate school. And uh, basically what he was referring to, it'll teach you about money management and risk and assessment of risk. And that's what he was referring to. He, he actually studied a great deal of, uh, and I didn't know this until much later, he he studied a great uh, deal of John Michelle's work from the dimensions of paradise. So that's really. Uh, I'm going to do the Japanese yen next, uh, 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 Marshall. As soon as the break comes back, I want to do the relationship between that so that, uh, you know, that's what we'll be watching. So anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you uh, with this thing with the Japanese yen and gold and also in the stock market because uh, there's a lot of talk about that. And I think we've got one more thing to cover. Let me post a chart here for the gold, and we'll talk about that when we uh, get back to the uh, for the break. Larry Pesavento has just announced a special 90-minute live webinar taking place this month for subscribers to his Fibonacci 24-7 trading service. On January 29th, from 4 till 5.30 p.m., Larry will be covering how to read supply and demand and how, in combination with his trademark ABCD patterns, you can control risk and maximize profit in today's algo-dominated markets. In this live 90-minute webinar, Larry will cover a hidden in plain sight trend change pattern that gives you early entry into the trend, how to find and update the key harmonic numbers to trade against in futures, forex, and stocks, how to translate three go-to patterns into supply and demand, and how to use them for entries, the continued importance of the opening price in 2020, and how to use the time of day when taking a position and for entry into longer trends. Sign up now by clicking on the newsletter tab on the front page of TFNN.com and select Fibonacci 24-7. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back, and I posted a chart of the Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar. 
and overlaid on that is the price of gold. Uh, what's interesting about this is you can see that there's a very high correlation, and we also have that Japanese yen has a high correlation with the risk-on formula that they have whenever the yen is in a position where it's uh, strengthening. What happens is that the market usually, stock markets usually rally because people borrow against the yen because it's at zero interest rates, and they can take that money, whatever that story happens to be. I'm a technician. I don't understand the fundamentals of it, but that's it. But what's interesting about this is you're seeing a divergence here now where the yen is moving one way and gold is moving the other. That's highly unusual. And here we are at a time when we're completing a whole bunch of patterns. I don't know what that means, but all I do know is if gold can get above 1575, then it's got a chance to, uh, you know, to turn bullish. But right now it's still in that negative uh, spiral that we see because of that last five-day rally that we had that ended yesterday up at uh, 1569. Uh, then we dropped down to 1564. Hold on, something's beeping to tell me, ah, that's it. That's what I wanted to hear. Hold on one second, folks. I have to be able to do something here. Uh, very interesting today to uh, keep an eye on the, uh, uh, hold on one second here. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, is to keep an eye on the bonds because we're at a very, very critical level in those bonds up here at uh, 158.25. We just just took out those highs of last week, and we need we need the bonds to get moving uh, rapidly, <laughs> rapidio. Otherwise, there's going to be a a bigger a bigger drop than what we might have thought. Uh, so let's keep a very close eye on that. I hate to repeat that because you get these things in your vocabulary like repeat that, or I'm only going to say this once. You know, that type of thing, and I say it more than once, whatever. We've had a question uh, about natural gas, and I really uh, – I'm going to cover natural gas right here, just right now. Remember, we, we're searching for a bottom here in natural gas, uh, and believe me, when I say searching for a bottom, I don't – mean loosely because we've had some really wild swings here since Sunday night. Let's get up here and take a look at natural gas. You'll see Sunday uh, on the 19th of January, we uh, uh, broke down all the way to this level right here, and uh, which was down. We were down uh, $2,000 in natural gas, folks, and now we've gained a 1,000 of it back, but we had a, a rally up to 195 It rallied 12 cents, came down to uh, the 61% retracement, 187. We're now trading at 191. What I'm watching for on this 15-minute chart is a really clear ABCD pattern and a fit point, because if I get that, uh, that's all I need to know because I I I all I, I can read the charts clearly because that's the sum total of all the ball, the buyers and sellers. That's not a problem. But if I see that pattern, much like we looked at in the S&P last night when it was at uh, 3335, you'd have to risk more than three cents on that, folks, because the 3335 was a 1.618 expansion of the intraday move. So if it gets above that, the 1.618 has failed and bada bing, bada boom, you know, it's no good. Look what's happened to the 1.618s. In Apple and Google, and uh, they, they destroyed them. Tesla, all of them have been destroyed. You know, uh, and Google gapped above the 1.618 level. So you have to think that you know, these stocks could certainly be in a meltdown situation. We don't know. But, you know, the good part is nobody else does either. So what you really want to watch is to see how the uh, overall situation uh, gives you risk control. That's the whole thing of uh, what we're what we're really watching in here. Yes, oil is uh, after we hit. I think we've talked about this several times. Let's just review the oil market here because it's another one that here you had the most bullish possible things here. Get this up here to see where we are here. And uh, I got this put up here so you'll be able to see it. Here's oil. You'll notice that that uh, 57 level is so critical. We're trading below 58 now, 57 and change. Below 57, folks, is not good for the oil market. Uh, that The reason why is you completed that big ABCD move up there uh, when we had the uh, – thing with the, uh, that's been two weeks ago, for heaven's sakes, with the uh, Iranian situation, whatever that was. Now, that's not even in the news anymore. Now we've got the flu, whatever. And here again, you've got these four companies that uh, control all the news, Disney, Comcast, Telecom, and I can't remember the third one or the fourth one, but they, they basically have control over the network. So whether free 
free speech is going down the sidelines along with gun control? I don't know. All I do know is below 57 in the, soy, uh, in the crude oil is not very good, especially after a three-day rally that really went nowhere. That's all I'm looking at. So I hope that helps, but it certainly doesn't look very bullish. And believe me, folks, uh, no problem, Terry. Happy to help. On Remember, Terry said, thanks for your thoughts on natural gas. That's exactly what they are, Terry, their thoughts. I'm just looking at the charts. I have never seen a natural gas, well, I've probably seen a natural gas canister, but I don't know anything about it. The fundamentals, I don't know the contract size. All I know is $100 a point, and that's that's all I really need to know. I don't really need to know more than that. Just like Curly from City Slickers, he always held up one finger, and he says, what does that mean? He said, do one thing and do it right and that's uh, what you try to do the difference folks between uh, when you first start trading and someone's been trading a long time is when you when you trade and realize that you're wrong uh, the, the 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 older trader versus the the guy that gets started the neophyte the difference is the older trader he gets out of his losses faster and that's the that's the real difference. In fact, there's a there's a quote that David used uh, just the other day that I thought was uh, pretty cool. And where did I write it? I even wrote the darn thing down. Where did I write it down? At? Oh, put it put it in the file. In other words, it's the man who loses the quickest is the uh, is the better. The one who loses the fastest because he gets out of his position. So. It's all about risk control, folks. No one can tell you what's going to happen next. You know, some people can think think that they do, but not necessarily it's going to happen. That's a, that's a main thing, you know, to keep in mind as we're looking at uh, these markets. I wanted to cover another one of the uh, the markets that we've been, been following for quite some time, and that is the hog market here. And we'll get this up here to tell you where we are here. Uh, we're trading around 75 right now. We almost made that uh, exact 786 again, but it's holding as long as hogs can do that. That that's fine. Here's another example when we had the Asian hog thing that you know hogs were going to go up forever, and what did they do? They dropped in half. So be really careful with the news. And that's if you read that book, Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. I mean, that's just uh, it's just unbelievable. Uh, oh boy! Oh, crude's at 57.15. Thank you, Bob. That's a very nice thing to say today. Okay, that's good. Below 57. Watch it real close because it's either going to stop right at 57, uh, and uh, we'll see. Uh, someone alert me if we get below that level. I'd like to, uh, let, I'd like to uh, know that, and we'll see a little bit here. Okay, let's move back here. Yeah, 57.15. Wow, we really got a... Uh, well, it's good. let's take a quick look at this oil, though, just, uh, just why we can uh, keep an eye on it. Hold on a second. All righty. Oh, we're making a big ABC down here. Let's do the hourly chart here quickly, folks, and I'll push it up and we'll we'll see where we are. Oh, we're almost at the 786. That's that key number. Let's get it up here, and then we will see why we're looking at it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. we have just broken it. Let's take a look at this when we get back from the break because this is at the moment of truth, lady, boys and girls. The fat lady singing. If you are in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. 
The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, folks, let's get up here. We'll take a quick look at the uh, uh, this uh, oil market. Uh, I want to bring it to your attention here. Uh, if you'll notice here, as we look at the uh, longer-term chart here, this goes back over the last uh, month or so. This is just a 60-minute chart. You see the low we made down there, 55.20. Then we had the thing with the Saudis. It rallied 10 bucks, and now we've given it back. Now we're breaking below the 78% level, folks, that's a, that's a very, very, very sign. And when you add to this uh, the fact that uh, if you just took a look at what the uh, what our prediction was using uh, AI, you'll notice that uh, this was for a move down, and uh, we're now breaking. We're going to be below 5,700. It looks pretty closely through here. Now, what I watch on these smaller-term charts is I watch how it repeats over and over again. And when you see that repetition, that gives you a chance to, uh, you know, be looking at uh, either being a, being a buyer or seller. That's a real, real main thing. And you notice when the market opens, as soon as the stock market opens, the algo traders come in and start buying, and they push it up very, very quickly. And that they, they're controlling the market a lot, folks. You've got to, you've got to pay attention to that opening price uh, in everything, not just the stocks. But uh, when the market opens, that's when those orders are coming in, and that's what makes it uh, you know, pretty exciting as we, as we look at uh, some of these things. Uh, unfolding here during the day. Let's keep an update of where we are here. Uh, we got we got as low as oh didn't do anything twenty. If we get below thirty three twenty eight today, there might be a down day, half of a down day, uh, in the market. But we'll have to uh, wait and see. Uh, someone's asked me a question about the uh, uh, situation. It with gold, uh, I mentioned it before. We need gold to get above 1575. Uh, right now, it's acting. It's acting like it's making some type of a bottom in here because yesterday's low was exactly a 618 of the move that we had from 1543 up to 1569. We pulled back right to the 618 at 1548, and now we're we're trading about uh, you know ten dollars, ten eleven dollars higher. So it's held that level. So if it can test it one more time, uh, then it's got a it's got a real chance. So those are just a few of the things that we want to want to be watching. So uh, I think that's what I would be paying attention to if I were a, a person that uh, watched these markets closely, which I do. I do not watch them 24 hours a day, folks. Uh, I know you get. Those of you that subscribe to 24/7, you'll get things in the middle of the night. That's because I get up uh, 
because Mother Nature, as you get older, the gravity part of uh, your body, uh, as water goes downhill, as they say, and then when I uh, come back to look at the prices, uh, I can see, you know, if anything's really exciting. That's when I was watching the uh, the S&P last night up at that uh, 3336. So we'll see if, in fact, that's going uh, that's going to be the case. So we'll do uh, do one thing at a time here as we come through, and let's take a look here. Uh, Oh, you know, folks, I just want to reiterate, pay very, very close attention to the Treasury bonds. We're trading at 158.24. We've been as high as 158.26. That's a really key level. We took out the highs of the other day, and we'll see if that's going to mean anything. Uh, I know that everybody's watching uh, the uh, the longer term, let's just get this up here so we can look at it, this longer term chart uh, on the bonds. And I wanted to show you where we are. Just give me one second, because there's a lot of people that are, uh, this is a weekly chart. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, you know, I've got, a, I've got one of those, uh, hold about, hold on a second here. I've got one of those new smartphones. You'll notice here uh, in the long-term weekly bonds, you know, we did make a, a 382 retracement down there, so that has potential to be pretty bullish. Uh, but right now, it's taken nine days to move, uh, or this is weeks. It's taken eight weeks to, to get out of that low. That doesn't, you know, tell you that something's going to happen. But anything below 156 in those bonds would really, really be bad. We're trading 158 and 25 right now. So that's why we're looking at it. The top of the bonds was made four years ago, folks, up at 176. Then we made a 78% retracement with open interest dropping. By the way, open interest in all of the stock indices yesterday and then that big up move all open interest was increasing so there was no indication there was short covering in there but uh, we've had a lot of short covering in the over the last month or so in the S&P because we were at 3 million open interest and now we're at 2.7 million so we lost uh, you know 300,000 contracts somewhere in, during that December uh, going off the board so that's uh, that's what we're keeping an eye on here as we look at uh, a few of these other things that we're paying attention to. Okay, we've got the oil trading at 5709. We're about ready to break below 57, and that's going to be an interesting thing because we've already broken the 78% level, so we need to, to watch that uh, closely also. All righty, let's move over here to just a little bit. Uh, here's why I'm so interested in the bonds. I'll give you a little a little tour here of what I'm watching. This is the forecast that I'm looking at today. And uh, you'll see here that sometime around 1030, let's say 11 o'clock, right around 11 o'clock, which is about an hour and 10 minutes from now, um, these bonds might start to move lower. We've taken out the highs the previous days and also last week's high. And if it doesn't keep charging ahead by 11 o'clock, that's going to tell you that there's selling coming in and you want to pay close attention to that. All right. Someone's asked a question about the euro. God bless these calls. Keep coming in, Al. I'm sorry to keep you swamped, buddy, but what can you do? What can you do? All right. Let's move over here to the uh, to the euro. It's always a fun one to watch. And there it is. This is where I think we're going in the euro is down to the uh, one, 110. In fact, I think we're pretty close to there right now. I think that's pretty much where it's at because I haven't updated it yet because we've been coming down quite a bit. I believe we're really close to 110, uh, 11070. I think that's where we are. Someone have to check it for me, but that's where we're headed. And that's when the U.S. dollar will decide, you know, which direction it was going to go. And if you looked at this U.S. dollar chart, we highlighted that when it was happening. And the fact that it made a beautiful 382 retracement that took five days to complete, and then it exploded to the upside, and it's continuing to go higher uh, as we speak. So that's what it looks like in the euro. We're seeing the same thing. We're having a little bit of strength in the British pound. It's holding up relatively well. But the Australian dollar backed off, the Canadian, all of them, the Japanese yen, you can see we, it's having some trouble at that 110 level. That's another thing that's a little bit troubling of what's going on in some of these markets. So let's uh, let's see what's happened. So we'll see. But tomorrow, okay, we're getting really close to it, Bob. Yeah, we're very close to that level in the euro right now. So we need to, we need to be watching it. Uh, 
uh, in this next day or two. But I think the ones to key on today uh, are is the bond market, of course, and that's the one that I focus on because that's pretty big money in there. Remember, the bonds trade about six times as much as the minis, uh, open interest. So it's a it's a big market, and that's where the debt is. So. We'll watch that. Tomorrow, uh, we'll have uh, Storm and Norman Nixon. Uh, Nixon. <laughs> he played for the Lakers. Storm and Norman Winsky will be our guest from Astro, uh, uh, Astro Trend. Is that we Astro Trend? And then on uh, Friday, we'll have Tom Hugard as our guest. Uh, that's what I'm planning. Uh, he's back from vacation, so hopefully if he's got the time, he'll be able to do it. But the main thing is we've got Shane Smolian next Wednesday, the 29th, and that'll be a, a really interesting show because he's got so much stuff that is uh, – that, that is useful, that it's it's really it's, it's really a lot of fun. So let's take a look. certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, 
Let's get back into this. Uh, yeah, the bonds. Uh, watch the bonds at 11 o'clock, folks. If they're under 158.24, uh, that's going to be very, very negative, uh, in my opinion. Of course, opinions are like armpits. Everybody has one, and it usually smells. Let's take a quick look here at another one that hit a really nice number here this morning that we follow quite closely. Here is the British pound. As you can see, we got up to that 131.50. We've only sold off about 20 or 30 pips from that level but that's telling you if we get above the 130 150 it could be quite bullish and if you look at it really closely from where we were uh, on the 20th uh, you'll notice that it's made a really nice ABCD, so that tells us we got some resistance. You'll notice that these dark black lines you see coming down, those are just the harmonic numbers in the British pound. It keeps repeating over and over again over a whole period of a week. It rallied exactly the same time, and then once you took out that high, uh, it, it changed the vibration, and that's what it does. It either expands or contracts, and that's why you want to you know pay attention to harmonic numbers because they do expand and contract but they do it in the natural part, part of the market. For what I'm saying is we have a harmonic number in gold that is, uh, you know, say 34, half of that is uh, 17, and what 618 is 17 is 11. You'll see that the harmonic number is about $11 in gold, and that's uh, for the shorter-term trading, of course, but that's it. Uh, no, I was never a Laker fan. I was a fan of the Boston Celtics number 33, Larry Bird from French Lick, Indiana. Got to meet that guy a couple times at his birthday party. He was born on December the 4th, but his parties were on July the 4th because uh, the Celtics were always playing in December. So we had a big party out at Max Gibson's farm, catfish fry and everything. Okay, let's move on. Oh, my goodness, the time has come up. Al, you're going to have to turn off the, the, the radio show here for the, the board with no more people calling in today. So we'll watch it closely. Anyway, uh, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, my friends, and may God bless and try to do something for someone that doesn't have as much as you, and you'll feel a lot better. May God bless.